Okay, so at this stage, uh, we're pretty much ready to do our first test failover. Uh, before we do that, let's just have a quick review of uh, everything that we've done up until this point. So um, our two arrays, which are zoned together, uh, we've got our one LUN with some VMs inside it replicated from production to DR. Now, for that replication to actually work, we're using a, a technology called MirrorView. And um, mirror view for that to work then as well, obviously you've got your zoning set up and uh, another kind of catch as well that you need to ensure that's up and running is that you have a reserve loan pool set up on the array side um, for the snapshots on the mirrors to work. Just to double check that where it's actually set up, we can see it from here, reserve loan pool. And I've just added a, a bunch of LUNs in there. So basically the, the purpose of this reserve LUN pool, I suppose in VMware terms, could be used for the, the location where the delta uh, of the LUNs is stored um, while they're in snapshot or be, being snapshotted, I suppose you could say. Um, now with failover and test failover, um, during the testing period is the only time that the snapshots on the LUNs will actually be used. Um, when we do an actual recovery or failover, if you will, um, from production to DR, the snapshots or that the, the snapshot functionality is not used at all. Uh, mirror view, uh, the synchronous replication kicks in. So just to reiterate that, the, the snapshots are only used for test failover. Okay. Okay, so quite a lot of stuff happens uh, during a test failover. Uh, we may as well just watch one live and I'll try and comment on as much as I can uh, during the process. So uh, let's give it a go. Okay, so all it's asking us to do here is whether we want to synchronize the changes um, from the production side to the DR side, uh, LUN. Uh, you'll remember when we were setting up MirrorView, um, one of the options towards the end there was a uh, a kind of uh, interval time, I think high, low and medium, that, that that kind of dictates exactly how often the synchronizing happens between the two sites or the, the two LUNs, if you will. So basically, if we select this option, this is going to push um, any, uh, you know, push all the changes that are on the production LUN over to the DR side LUN. So we have a complete synchronous copy of the data between the two sites. So we'll leave a default for now and just say yes. Okay, so it's now mirror views kicking in and uh, it's now just synchronizing any changes from production to DR. So hopefully this shouldn't take too long. Now we're not gonna see a whole lot really happen on this ESX host um, regarding the actual test, but we'll pop over to Pandora, the DR side, and we should see a lot of activity over here in a few minutes. Let me just uh, move that around. Let's have a quick look in the kernel of the ESX host as well to see if there's anything interesting happening yet. And we're down here. You now there's a lot of these messages pop up, these uh, IOWares read of GPT header. I would tend to ignore those messages. Um, that's just the, uh, the snapshot LUN uh, being detected after a rescan. So I would expect to throw a few errors if it's in a read only state. Nothing happening on the production side ESX at the moment. So our synchronizing still going on there. Let's flick over to Pandora, see what's happening. Nothing much yet. Okay. So the synchronization is finished. This is where it, the snapshots come in uh, to play on the LUN itself. Um, I had a lot of fun getting this up and running and you'll find if you run into the problems I did that it tends to uh, hang and fail at 45% a lot. Um, the reason why it was failing for me at this point is because I didn't have my snapshot uh, enablers or my snapshot mechanism set up correctly on the array side on both sides. Um, I didn't have my reserve LUN pool uh, set up. So the SRA was calling a snapshot 
um, the command was fine but there was nowhere to store the snapshot because there was no reserve line pool so it was failing here all the time the SRA logs can be quite difficult to decipher um, but you know going by timestamps that we saw for specific errors within the SRA side uh, digging deeper onto the array logs I was able to uh, get a specific error that pointed me in, in the right direction okay so we've gone to 51% so we can um, be happy that our snapshots are working and I'm pretty confident that this is going to work over to Pandora still not a lot happening these are two protected VMs here we can see uh, the two placeholder VMs there nothing happening on them yet so once we get past the snapshots then we should start seeing some activity on Pandora regarding the VMs so there's lots of activity here now these are all the changes happening to the uh, to the data source there's probably resignaturing going on um, some of the VMs there the placeholder VMs are being renamed you can see that there starting to power on the VMs I would expect to see a lot of activity as well in the kernel it's a huge amount of activity happening here I think we missed the part about the resignaturing of the actual LUN. We might come back to that later, but it's in there somewhere. Okay, so the VMs are powering on at the moment. It's going to stay at this point until VMware tools are fully up and running. So you can see the VMs are probably pretty much up and running there, but it just gives it a bit more time for tools to become you can see their tools not responsive fully yet not running probably takes about a minute or so for that to fully kick in let's go back and have a quick look at the kernel on Pandora I just want to see if we can see that It's probably more apparent in the actual failover of the, the long signaturing. I don't think it actually. Okay, and now the uh, test is complete. Let's see all the VMs have been fully powered on there. We'll just flick over to Pandora. You can see the tools are running and then the test is complete. So we can see that the VMs are actually accessible there. To a certain extent anyway okay I just want to have a quick look at um, an example of some log messages from the VM kernel uh, while the test failover is happening um, you know the, a lot of the SCSI sense goals could be interpreted that there's something wrong or uh, customers could think that there's an issue on the array side but uh, it's not the case really so uh, what we're looking at here is an actual uh, example of uh, what we just did there so you can see, um, you know, when it kicks off that there's a bunch of SCSI sense codes there, which look like, you know, classic storage errors. Um, if we go ahead and decode the, these sense codes here, um, basically it's just going to report that, um, you know, reported LUNS data has changed, which I'm assuming is expected behavior, you know, if we're kind of dealing with SRM and snapshots and rear view and stuff like that. So I wouldn't be alarmed by that at all. Um, after that, we're just kind of seeing a lot of kind of rescanning, which is quite normal. Um, the scanning still going on there. Now this is the, the next interesting part that I saw here. These were other SCSI sense codes. These are the, the devices that were being replicated with mirror view and um, they're the HBs I was using. So these are other um, SCSI sense codes, you know, device uh, SCSI sense codes coming from the array. Again, you know, to the untrained eye do look alarming and would indicate that there's an issue. Um, but again, once you decode them, you'll see that basically all it's saying is that the device is a deactivated snapshot, which is pretty helpful. So all those IO errors that we are seeing in the VM kernel, you know, from these devices is just because, you know, the ESX is detecting, detecting it as a snapshot. So not alarming at all. So we can skip on through that. We're seeing some more rescanning down there. Now, this is the interesting part here, uh, really. This is uh, where we see the actual, um, you know, the SRAs and the kind of, I suppose, the beauty of SRM kicking in, um, the automatic LUN uh, resignaturing and mounting of the data stores. 
So, you know, if there's, uh, you can see it there, it's, it's detected as a snapshot. A couple of SCSI sense codes in there. We're still getting in our IO errors because it is a snapshot. And then down around here is where the magic actually happens. You can see here that SRM has kicked in and automatically re-signatured the run. Begin with signaturing. You can see it right there. So once that's down, and then it automatically mounts um, the run as well uh, as part of the, uh, the the failover process. So it's 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 pretty impressive stuff. All right, you know. So let's uh, go back to the virtual center. Okay, the next thing we have to do now uh, is to clean up our tests which is going to basically discard any changes or any uh, snapshots that we've created uh, during our tests. So let's just go ahead and hit the clean up button. So again, it's at this stage powering down um, the VMs, just missed it there on Athena. You can see all the activity going on here on mounting the VMFS volume, detaching the LUN itself. Discarding the test data, resetting the storage. So it's just setting it back to square one essentially. So once um, th this is finished, our VMs will obviously be powered back up. Uh, so it will be accessible again on the production site. Okay, and that, that's now complete. Back to our summary. So we're now back to square one again, where we have our two options, test and recovery. And we'll just go back and check that our VMs are okay. And there they are, our two VMs, fully up and running, tools running, and fully accessible. Okay.